Video, we're going to cover the new specularity blending modes that are new to 3D Coat 4.1. Here in the paint room, if you come over to the layer panel just below the opacity and the depth slider, you can see a new one for specularity. And you can adjust the value here by dragging the slider or clicking on the box to enter the value numerically. Here are the new blending modes that are available. But before I get into that, I want to mention that it's not to be confused with color specularity blending mode. The reason for that is 3D Coat uses both the color and the specularity information to provide a means for 3D Coat to export a fourth map. Okay, so you'll still get a standard specularity map, essentially a grayscale map. But then it will also export that color tint so that you can plug that into your material in the specularity color channel. All right. So let me just try and demonstrate that quickly. I've got a new layer here. And I'm going to come over to the tool panel and choose a paintbrush. Uh, pick my color. And choose the type of draw mode I want to use, whether a brush or maybe a selection. In this case, let's choose ignore back faces so that we can select all the way through. And I only want to work with color and specularity, so I will turn off the depth channel. And also will check my opacity and my specularity before I begin painting. So let me go back over here to Freeform Lasso. And you can see that you have 100% uh, color and 100% specularity, all white. So instead of the user painting grayscale values from black to white, 3D Coat handles that through this value slider here. If you want to go in reverse and actually uh, paint away some of the specularity, you want to use the eraser tool for that very purpose. And so just like with the specularity, let me go back to the paintbrush here. Um, the specularity at 100% is all white and uh, be black or you know very dark gray at zero. Okay, nothing. And so when we go to the eraser, it's obviously just the opposite. So 100% will be essentially all black and zero will be all white. So let's try 50%. And you can see how that works. Let's try a different brush alpha here, and I'll use a stamp. So before these new blending modes, this is essentially how you would sort of mask out different parts of your specularity map. You could apply a mask layer if you wanted, but now with these specular blending modes, they sort of act like a mask, uh, at least some of them do, such as suppress and subtract, and even uh, alpha blending to some degree. So I'll go ahead and uh, delete that layer. And what I have here is two spec color maps and I use this top one to kind of modulate some of the specularity. You zoom in, you can see I use kind of a fabric texture just to kind of break up the specularity a little bit. And I'll choose a regular brush alpha here. Okay, so let me, I'm going to create a new layer here. And we'll start with add. Yeah, additive is just going to add to all the specular values or specular information we have in other layers beneath this. So I'll choose the paintbrush again, regular brush, checking more back faces this time, and I can turn off color because I really don't need it anymore. You can see how that works, and I can quickly modulate the specularity on that layer. And I can see it appear here in the texture editor as well. 
under the specular map. So let's try subtract, and you can see it's practically the inverse. So suppress, as I mentioned, is almost identical, except that it's just a little more subtle and offers a little bit more uh, gradation as well. The maximize, uh, the best way I can describe this is that it's going to adopt the highest value, whether it's from this layer or the layers beneath this. So let me try and demonstrate. Um, I'll just go ahead and erase all of that. And so with specularity, I think this is probably about 10% uh, specularity or less. So if I scale this down to about five or so, I won't notice much difference because it's not additive, it's not subtractive. Um, 3D code is just going to use whichever value is the highest. So basically, these the higher values here are overriding this you know lesser value that I'm trying to paint now. So if I crank that up above then you can see it's adopting this slightly higher value. So overwrite is going to allow this layer to override regardless. So let me undo. And yeah, go back to overwrite. I'll erase all that. Okay. And so let's bring this down to about 20 or so. Let's bring it down to just a few. And you can see it's wiping out the the specularity below it's again it's overriding it okay so alpha blending this one is a little bit difficult to explain but what I'll do is let me just clear that layer I'll create a new one and we'll try to paint with color and specularity this is usually applicable whenever you want to use something like materials where you're painting color, uh, spec, and depth, you know, all simultaneously. 3D Coat can use the, the brightness of the color to translate into, you know, a brighter grayscale value and the darker color values, it'll translate into darker grayscale values. And so it'll use that somewhat as an alpha channel to modulate the specularity. Okay, so let me go ahead with a hundred percent on both and uh, I'll go ahead and change it to spec color and you'll notice if I drag the opacity all the way down it really is no different at all so you see, as I drag the color opacity slider, okay, this is the only one that will modulate the specularity based on the color opacity. Okay. So I know that's a lot to take in, but just uh, experiment with it and, and see what you think. And that should bring this tutorial to a conclusion. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.